Hello and welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. Today I'm going to teach you guys how I do that fancy slide cutting trick that you see all the drywallers do. That is, if you ever see drywallers anywhere. I'm also going to show you a couple other little tips to efficiently cut drywall. Well, the first thing you're going to need is a tape measure and a knife. But what I do here is I put it on the inside right here and I make sure that it's resting nice and flat on there, if you can see that. And I pinch it between these two fingers. And so the next trick is making sure that I'm always pulling out. This hand, however, is obviously pinching the tape measure where I want it to go. But what I mean is I've always got it under tension. And that's what helps keep it locked in the same position instead of wavering like this. So you put outward pressure to hold it nice and steady. First, I want to get a measurement for what I need here. So it's probably going to be the same height as this one, which is 37 and 3 eighths. Next, what I'm going to do is measure from the bottom. So I'm hooking onto the drywall and I'm going to put my knife in at 37 and 3 eighths. So that's right there. And I just make a little puncture. So usually what you have is you're going to have a stack of sheets of drywall leaning up against a wall. Right now I just have one, but usually try and find an unimpeded surface for it to be against. So if this was a bare wall like the studs, then what happens if you just got one sheet is your knuckles bump on each stud and it's hard to hold it steady. Or a door jam could give you the same kind of problem. But usually you've got about 10 sheets or so all stacked up and lined up so you can do lots of cuts all the way down. And then once you get to the last one, that's where it's a bit trickier. Okay, so how do we do this? All right, get your knife in position, find that little puncture you just made. And then what you do is you pinch your blade. And so I've got my finger resting right here and I'm getting ready to pull. And what I'm gonna make sure of is that I don't warble like this, that I stay totally parallel. And so I'm keeping it taut and I'm just going to go along here like so. And I think I went a tiny bit out of square, so that's going to make this a bit short possibly. 10 and 9 sixteenths. Oh, 10 and 5 eighths. So I have a sixteenth of difference, but that is more than good enough for drywall. If you're going to a sixteenth of an inch with drywall, you're going to have a lot of blown out corners. Something to keep in mind here is let's say you've got a bunch of two inch cuts you need to make. So before you go and snap this off and then go to make another cut. So like let's say I'm doing a bunch of two inch rips down here. Instead of doing a two inch rip, breaking it off and then doing another two inch one, what you do is you make all your marks. Two inches, four inches, six inches. And it gets a little bit harder when it gets this small, but you can still do it. So that way what I did was I used this factory edge to make sure all of these stay straight. Because if you do them individually, it's going to get progressively wavier. Not only that, the rough edge of the drywall is really uncomfortable on your finger. I can also quite accurately do it this way. I do that all the time as well because I always forget my T-square. So I can pretty easily go up to about three and a half feet and get a decent cut. But because I want this to stay full length, I'm not going to. But it's the exact same thing. You just hold it and go down. And then when I get down to the very bottom, I can only get about this far. So there's about three inches left that I can't actually do. And what I do is I just stand over it, eyeball it, and cut up that three inches. Or you could have a T-square. That would be easier. So after you make your first cut, you just snap, snap, snap. It's pretty straightforward. There you go. I got a bunch of two inch rips there. So the slide cut isn't going to work everywhere. So obviously if I try and slide cut this, it's kind of going to move all over the place. And I'm not about to grab clamps and clamp this down so I can slide cut it. Now some people would use a straight edge, but that requires making some marks and going and getting a straight piece and you know, a bunch of faffing about. So what I'm going to do, let's say I want to cut this thing right down the middle. So maybe at about two and a half inches or so. So I'm going to go two and a half, two and a half. And then what I do is I take my tape measure, I go like so, and I just, 
the reason these methods are efficient is because I'm not dropping the tools that I have in my hand. I'm keeping them both in the same hands and I'm just able to work. So I'm not measuring and writing down numbers as much and you know, getting the pencil out, putting the knife back in, taking the pencil out. All of those things add up a lot over time. It's just simple economy of motion. Now here's another thing I like to do to efficiently cut drywall. I filmed this last night though, and I probably have less stubble in this clip. Never measure when you don't have to. There's no reason you need to go and measure the length of this and then go mark that on a piece of drywall, make lines and cut everything. You can just slap the piece of drywall on here and cut it in place like so. Keep in mind this is my demo wall so I'm using nails where I would actually use screws. So I'm just going to take this piece of drywall right here and I'm going to line up one side of it, tack it in place. So now that that's tacked in place, I can just take my knife and run it along the back side of this on a bit of an angle, like so. And now I can break that in place. And it's perfectly cut. So I'll do the same thing for height too. Instead of now measuring this, I'm just going to hold this up right here. And with practice, you can get good at cutting pretty straight lines without measuring or marking or doing any of that stuff. And no need to cut the back side, and you can just yoink it off. Now, of course, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So once you get in the habit of doing that, you can actually do a really good job and do it really quickly and start to apply those same techniques into all kinds of other areas. There's no need to do all this measuring and marking that a lot of people do because there's almost always an easier way to do it. Back to today. So the reason that that's efficient should also be pretty obvious. Again, I'm using the minimal amount of tools and the minimal amount of steps to get the job done. Instead of measuring everything and faffing about and using up a bunch of time, I'm simply grabbing a scrap off the ground, fastening it to the wall, cut it, and it's a really great way to get all of those small pieces done pretty quickly. Anyways, thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. I hope you've got some useful tips out of this video. I hope your project's going well and hopefully a little more efficient. That was a toilet flushing in my house. It's my garage, you guys. Okay, thanks for watching. You just totally ruined my outro. Bye. Oh yeah, if you want to help out the channel, you can do all those like, subscribe, and things that, you know, people tell you to do. Again? Alright, whatever. See you guys. Let's go before that happens again.